There you go. Just kind of decide how much you want it to overlap. And let's do a star. If you do it this way, on the additional images for your other pages, you do not want to click weld on this page because you're not going to leave them here. Once you get it figured out where you want them, you're going to put them on their own page and weld them on that page and then we'll come back and delete them from here. This is an easy way to do it. The only problem that I find, and, and maybe I'm alone in this, but if you get into doing a really detailed book that has a lot of, um, you know, like you're trying to tell a story, kind of like with my Christmas book, sometimes moving an image or a page, even an eighth of an inch, can make a big difference in the overall effect of the book. So for me, it's easier to go ahead and just design them on their own individual page and continue to use the preview feature. It does take a little more time to do this. And by doing it this way, it does eliminate as much need to keep previewing your pages. So it's kind of a personal preference or it may just depend on how detailed you're getting. But let's go ahead and do it this way. So on this, on the second page, we're going to want the flower. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click copy, go to the second page and hit paste. And it welded it exactly where it was at on the first page. I come up here to my shape properties box and I click weld. I will go over to my rectangle and I will just grab the arrow and drag it out to where I want it. on my flower. Um, lost my train of thought. Let's open another new page, go back, click the heart, copy, go to the new page, paste, go back, grab the rectangle for the base of the book, copy, new page, paste, and drag it. Did I click weld on my heart? No, I've got to click weld. On the rectangle, you do not have to click weld each time because it is welded on the first page. So every time I copy and paste it to a new page, the weld function is already selected. Then we'll go back to our first page. Let's see, that was the heart. And we're going to copy, new page, paste, so we've got our rectangle, go back to the first page, to the star, hit copy, paste, and drag this over. I know what I was going to say a minute ago. You don't ever want to mess with the up and down arrows because by copying, pasting the base of the book, your book will come out the same exact same height, your pages will all fit together perfect, and if you tried to manipulate the height of it, it's going to mess everything up. So you only want to drag out, but not up and down. And then just decide how far you want it to overlap on your shape. And I forgot to click weld on my star, so I'm going to click weld. And I think that should do it. Now I can go back to the first page, delete each extra image that I added and hit preview and it'll show us exactly how the book is going to cut. If we need to move or manipulate the images we can, that is exactly what it's going to cut out. The solid black line is where the Cricut will cut. The light gray lines are just showing you that that's what, what is not going to be cut or what you've overlapped. On your book. So that is exactly how, how it will look if you decide that you want it to overlap more. You can just go back to each page and continue to scoot your images in, drag your pages in, until you get it to look exactly like you want. I hope this has given you a basic idea of Design Studio and maybe answered some of your questions. As you can tell, it's a really simple. You just have to get in there and play with it. Um, making the word book, as I have said before, is really simple. It's a matter of adding 
shapes, letters, to a basic rectangle and welding it. In future videos, we'll get more in depth and I plan to show you how to add layers to your pages. And my goal, actually I would like to do a start to finish a book so that if you follow each video step by step, at the end of the video series, you will have completed a shape album. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll come back.